let x and y have a joint probability density function f of x y is equals to 1 over 8 x y and x lies between 0 and 2 and y lies between 1 and 3. We want to calculate a number of probabilities. And the first one is we want to calculate probability that x is less than 1 and y is less than 2. Remember x lies between 0 and 2 and y lies between 1 and 3 and it is 0 otherwise. So if x is less than 2, then it means, for example, for the value of y, if it's less than 2, then it will be between 1 and 2. And for the x, it will be between 0 and 1. 1 over 8, x of y, dx, dy. So with that set of information, then we could get the first integral. This is for the y, because we are saying y is less than 2. What we can keep in mind is this, to make it easier for us to recall. So for the x, it is 0 and 2, and we are told that x is less than 1. So the interval that we are looking for x is this. While for the y, it lies between 1 and 3, and we are told that the value of y is less than 2. So we are interested in this, and that's why we said for the y is that. And for the x, the interval will be that one from 0 to 1. And the, that gives us 1 over 8. And the x lies between, y lies between 1 and 2. And then y, so x is x squared over 2. And the value is between 0 and 1 dy. So when we substitute uh, x is equals to 1, it will be a half. When we substitute x is equals to 0, it will be 0. So it will be a half times 1 over 8, uh, 1 to 2 y dy. And uh, this gives us 1 over 16 y squared over 2, 1 to 2, which is 1 over 16 times 1 over 2, 2 squared minus 1 squared. 2 squared is 4, 4 minus 1 is 3, so it's 3 over that 2. And that is the probability that x is less than 1, and probability the same time that y is less than 2. For the case where we have been given, for example, x is greater than 0, and y is greater than 2, it will definitely be the integral for y. y will lie between 2 and 3, and x will lie between 0 and 2. 1 over 8, dx, uh, dxy, dx, and dy. And uh, this gives us 1 over 8, the integral 2 to 3. I'll start off with y, with x, sorry. It will be x squared over 2. And the interval is 0 to 2 dy. And this is 4 over 2, which is 2. So I'll take 2 outside, which will be 2 over 8. Then I'll integrate y. It will be y squared over 2. And I'll put the limits as 2 and 3. So it is a quarter 9 over 2 minus 4 over 2, which is uh, a quarter times 5 over 2, which is 5 over 8. Another example is we want to find probability of x plus y is less than 3. And what we want to keep in mind is that we would want to plot this when x is 0, y is 3, and when y is 0, x is 3. And then we can have a small diagram to represent the information that we have. Uh, remember, these are the values of x, and these are the values of y. y is 1, 2, and 3. x is 0, 1, and 2. So, uh, when x is 0, uh, y, so the line is this, first of all. And then the other thing is at this point, this will be true. So, when x is 2, y should be equals to 1. So the region that we require would be this. This is the region because this part is x plus y is greater than 3. 
and at this point is 3 minus y. So if y is 1, then x is 2. So this line, which means at this point, should be true. So since we know that x plus y is less than 3, then we can say that x is less than 3 minus y. And that's basically what we are trying to put across there. And that is important so that now we can express our equation in terms of y. Uh, x is less than that. So the lowest value of x is 0 and the highest value is 3 minus y. 1 over 8 dy dx dy. And therefore this is uh, 1 over 8 integral from 1 to 3 y. This is x squared over 2. Uh, from 0 to 3 minus y dy. It is best to start off with the integral of x so that uh, when you replace the value of y, then you can be easily be able to compute the dy easily. So it will be, I can put the 2 outside and then it will be 3 minus y squared then minus 0, which I do not need, and then dy. And I know that this will give me 9 plus y squared minus 6y, the 3 minus y squared. So therefore, this will give me 1 over 16, the integral from 1 to 3. If I multiply y times all this, I'll get 9y plus y cubed minus 6y squared. And I want to integrate with respect to y. This gives us 1 over 16, 9y squared over 2, plus y4 over 4, minus 6y cubed over 3. And we put the limits of integration from 1 to 3. This is 1 over 16. Uh, when y is 3, that is 81 over 2, plus 81 over 4, uh, divide by 3, 1, divide by 3, 2, 27 times 2, minus 54, then minus, when y is 1, it is 9 over 2, plus 1 over 4, minus 2 and then times 1 over 16. And uh, when we do all those computations, you will get the value as 1. You will get 1 over 16. It will be 81 over 2 plus 81 over 4 minus 54, minus 9 over 2, minus a quarter plus 2. And uh, after you do all that computations, the answer will be left as 1 over 4. And therefore, that is the probability that x plus y is less than 3. Keep in mind that your probability should always lie between 0 and 1 in whatever computations you are doing. Well, we are given two random variables, x and y, that have a joint probability mass function, that is the joint f of x, y, given by k times x plus y. x is discrete, as what you've mentioned, with a value of 0 and 1, and y is 1, 2, and 3 and zero otherwise. So the f of x, y will not take, uh, will take a value of zero when x is not zero and one and y is not one and two and three. So the first part is we want to find the value of the constant k. And the condition for any probability, uh, 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 probability density function is that uh, if you sum the f of x, it should be 1. 
if it's a joint, meaning you have two random variables, if you sum that, it should give you a value of one. So based on that set of information, now we want to move ahead and, and solve this problem. So I'm going to start by summing over y uh, for, for an easier list over x for the reason being that uh, I would feel more happy to see how the values would change with respect to the values that I love introduced in. So if I do sum over y, uh, x, in this case, uh, we say we want to sum over x. That's what we want to do. So what we mean by this is we want to find out the summation over y when y is 1, 2, and 3, and when x is x is 0 and 1, and then we want to sum k of x plus y, and we equate that to 1 to be able to get the constant k, because that's the condition that should always be satisfied. So if I sum over x, I'll put k there, when x is 0, it's 0 plus y, and then when x is 1, it is 1 plus y, and therefore I'll be left with k sum over y, 1 plus 2y. Now I have three values of y, y is 1, 2, and 3, therefore I'll keep k as a constant, and I want now to sum over y, so it will be 1 plus 2 times 1, and then the value of y is 2, it is 1 plus 2 times 2. And then when the value of y is 3, it is 1 plus 2 times 3. And that's what we have, and this should be equated to 1. That's basically what we have. It's 2 times 1, that is 2 plus 1, this is 3. This is 2 times 2 is 4 plus 1 is 5, this then 7. And all this gives me 15. So 15k is equals to 1. And this means that k is equals to 1 over 15. And that tells us we can write our f of xy to be equals to 1 over 15. x plus y. x is not and 1. And therefore y is 1, 2, and 3. So since we have the first part, we can move on and be able to compute the second part. Maybe we could be told to find probability of x is equals to 0 and y is equals to 1. And that basically means it is 1 over 15, 0 plus 1. And that gives me the probability of 1 over 15 that x is 0 and y is 1. What you could do is you could also come up with what we call uh, a joint probability table. Joint probability table whereby you put down the values of x and the values of y. So therefore allow me to interchange this whereby I write y stroke x. x is 0 and 1 and uh, and y is 0, 1, and 2, y is 1, 2, and 3. When, remember, our f of x, y is <coughs> x plus y divided by 15. So when x is 0 and y is 1, it's 1 over 15. When x is 1 and y is 1, is 2 over 15. When the value of x is 2 and y is 0 is 2 over 15, this is 3 over 15, and this is uh, 3 over 15, and this is 4 over 15. Now am I getting 4 over 15? x is 1 and y is 4. This then was what we'll call the joint probabilities, the joint probabilities where both x and y occur together. And I can come up with the marginal probabilities, 1 plus 2, which is 3 over 15, 5 over 15, 7 over 15. And if I sum this, they give me 1. 
this is 6 over 15 and this is uh, 7, 9 over 15. So these probabilities outside there, these are what we call marginal probabilities. And they are similar to this. These are also marginal probabilities. And the sum of probabilities will always be equals to 1. Well, these ones that are inside there is what we refer to as the joint probabilities. So what is the difference? The difference is 1 over 15 is probability of x is 0 and y is 1. Now, what about 6 over 15? 6 over 15. Then that's the marginal probability of x is equals to 0. The marginal probability of x is equals to 1 is 9 over 15. And the same case for the values of y. So that's how you'd go about that. The other things you can do with the same, uh, what we are doing, and uh, look at how to, at part C, we can want to find the expected of x, y. And by definition, for a joint, you sum over y, you sum over x, x, y times f of x, y. And therefore, this, I can write it as sum over y. You can sum with x first or sum with y. We know this is 1 over 15x plus y. So if you allow me, I'll put 1 over 15 outside there. Then I'll have y x squared plus x y squared. When I multiply x y times x plus y. That's what I'll end up with. Now, I know x is 0 and 1. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to substitute the values of x. When x is 0, so it will be 0 plus 0. And when x is 1, it will be y plus y squared. Therefore, I know this will disappear. I'll be left with y plus y squared when x is 1 because it will be 1 squared times y, which is y, and this one will be 1 times y squared, which is y squared. Then finally, I'm going to substitute the values of y starting with the lowest, which is 1. It will be 1 plus 1. When y is 2, it will be 2 plus 4. And then y will be 3. It will be 3 plus 3 squared, which is 9. And so this is 2, this is 6, and this is 12. And uh, what does that give me? That is 6, 8, 20. So it will be 20 over 15. And that is the expected value of x, y. We let x and y have a joint probability density function f of x, y is equals to k of x, y, where x lies between 0 and 2, and y lies between 1 and 3, and 0 otherwise. So the first step is we want to find the value of the constant k. And so the approach will be that the double integral from 0 to 2, 1, 2, 3, of k, x, y, d, y, dx should be equals to 1. So if we can do that integral, then we'll be able to have the solution to that. I can then express this as k. We can decide to start with x, 1, 2, 3, y, x squared over 2, and x lies between 0 and 2, dy. And this gives me 2 squared over 2. So this will be k, 1, 2, 3. That is 4 over 2, which is 2. So it will be 2y dy. So that's the integral that we find. And this, if we take it to the next step, will be equals to k, 2y squared over 2, and 1, 2, 3. And this will be k. These two cancels out. This will be 9 minus 1. 
which is 8k so from the definition that we had what we means is it means that 8k is equals to 1 and thus k is equals to 1 over 8 and so if k is 1 over 8 then we can write our joint probability density function as 1 over 8 of uh, xy where x lies between 0 and 2 and y lies between 1 and 3 and therefore that would be the solution uh, to that uh, constant k the value of constant k would be 1 over 8 with that we can find the expected value of x y and therefore by definition is the double integral of x y times 1 over 8 x y dx dy or dy dx and we can write that as 1 to 3 0 to 2 1 over 8 x squared y squared dx and dy and what that does that give us it gives us 1 to 8 1 over 8 1 to 3 i put y squared aside it will be x cubed over 3 and the integral the limits of integration is 0 to 2 the dy uh, 2 raised to power 3 is 8 so it is 8 over 3 times so it will be 1 over 8 times 8 over 3 and then the integral from 1 the integral is from 1 to 3 y squared dy and this is equals to 1 over 3 and this will be y cubed over 3 and the limits of integration is 1 to 3 <coughs> so it's at that 3 cubed is uh, 27 so it will be 27 over 3 minus 1 over 3 which will be equals to at that times 26 over 3 and therefore the expected of x y will be equals to 26 over 9 so we are able to get expected value and uh, we can get other values and uh, for example we could be told to find expected of x squared y and therefore by definition it's 1 over 8 double integral x squared y times the f of x x y dx dy and this will give us 1 over 8 the integral from 1 to 3 0 to 2 now we have x cubed we have y squared x cubed dx and dy and this gives us 1 over 8 the integral from 1 to 3 y squared this is x to power 4 over 4 and the limits of integration is 0 to 2 dy so 2 to power 4 is 16 16 divided by 4 is 4 so we have 4 so basically it will be 1 over 8 times 16 over 4 the integral of 1 to 3 y squared dy and we know this will cancel out by will cancel out by 8 1 by 8 2 by 2 1 by 2 2 so it's 1 over 2 the integral of y will be y cubed over 3 from 1 to 3 which will be equals to a half y uh, 3 less power 3 is 27 so it will be 27 over 3 minus 1 over 3 which is a half times 26 over 3 and the solution will be 13 over 3 so we can get the expected values if we have been given a bivariate distribution 
we are given x and y, which have a joint probability density function, which is 1 over 8xy, where x lies between 0 and 2, and y lies between 1 and 3, and 0 otherwise. So we want to find the marginal probability density function of x. And that is what we normally say it is f1 of x. Why are we getting the marginal? Because we have been given a joint, two variables together. So we want to extract one of the variables. And how do we express that for the continuous case? That is the integral from 1 to 3, 1 over 8, xy, dy, which is 1 over 8x, y squared over 2, 1, 2, 3. And we have done that before, and this will give us 1 over 8x, 9 over 2 minus 1 over 2, and that will give us a value equals to 8 over 2. So it will be 1 over 8x times 8 over 2, which will be equals to x over 2. Therefore, we can comfortably say f1 of x is equals to x over 2, where x lies between 0 and 2, and 0 otherwise. It should not come to as a surprise because you can also show that that f1 of x dx between 0 and 2 is equals 1. That means f1 of x is a pdf of x. Uh, let's show that very fast, and uh, this will give me the equation of the form from 0 to 2, x over 2, dx, it's not x squared, I mean x over 2, and this is uh, x squared over 4, and the limits of integration is 0 to 2, and the answer is 1, proving that our marginal PDF of x is actually true that it is a PDF. The second situation is where we want to get the PDF of uh, y, uh, that is the marginal, marginal PDF of y, and that is how we normally write it as f2 of y, and so f2 of y is the integral from 0 to 2, 1 over 8, xy dx. So when you're getting the margin of y, we integrate with respect to x, and that will give us y over 8, x squared over 2, 0 to 2. So and if we put that limit, it will be 4 over 2. Uh, 4 over 2 is 2, therefore it will be y over 8 times 2, which is y over 4. And we can say that the f2 of y will be equals to y over 4, where y lies between 1 and 3, and it's 0 otherwise. You can also show easily that actually the f2 of y is a PDF. Let, for number 2, want to let x and y have a joint probability mass function whereby you are given your f of x, y to be equals to 1 over 54 x plus y. x is 1, 2, and 3, and y is 1, 2, 3, and 4, and therefore 0 otherwise. So that is our probability mass function. And the first part is we want to find the marginal probability mass function of x, which is given as f1 of x. So that's what we want to find from that equation. 
And so based on that set of information, now we can be able to get the f1 of x, which is basically for the continuous we were integrating over y, for the mass function we sum over y, which is 1 over 54. And then we have x plus y, y is 1, then x, this will be given over summation of y, 1 over 54, x plus y. And we know that y is equals 1, 2, 3, and 4, and that's what I'm doing. So whenever there is y, I just sum with the value of x, then plus the value of given y. And that gives us 1 over 54, 4x plus 10. Therefore, I can comfortably say that my marginal uh, probability mass function for x is equals to 2x plus 5 over 27, and x lies with x is 1, 2, 3, and 0 otherwise. And uh, one thing we need to keep in mind is that you can show that uh, we can show that f1 of x is a probability mass function and basically what it means is you sum over x uh, 2x plus 5 over 27 and so it will be 1 over 27 and then it will be 2 times 1 plus 5 and then 2 times 2 plus 5 and then 3 times 2, which is 6 plus 5. The value of x is changing. It's 1, 2, 3. So it will be 1 over 27. 7 plus 9 plus 11, which will be 27 over 27 is equals to 1. So when I sum the f of x, f1 of x over x, and I get 1, then that tells me that it is a probability mass function, which is very true from what we have just been able to show. The second part is to find the marginal uh, probability mass function of y, and that is f2 of y. And how do we go about that? It is f2 of y is equals to u sum over x 1 over 54 x plus y and x is equals to 1 2 3 which will be 1 over 54 whenever there is x i put 1 plus y whenever there is x i put 2 plus y and whenever there is x i put 3 plus y and all that will give me 6 plus 3 y over 54 what is common 3 is common between all of them, so it will be 1 over 18, uh, 2 plus y. And therefore, I can comfortably say that my f2 of y is equals to 2 plus y over 18, y has 4 values, and uh, 0 otherwise. So that's the... the probability max function of y. We have x and y, which are two discrete random variables with a joint probability mass function given by f of x, y is equals to 1 over 54, x plus y, x is 1, 2, 3, and y is 1, 2, 3, and 4, and 0 elsewhere. So we want to we want to find a number of things from this. And the first one is we want to find y given x, that is the conditional distribution of y given x. And the definition of that is f of xy all over the f1 of x. So it is the joint distribution of x and y divided by the marginal distribution of x. So we already have f of x, y from the definition there. So we need to get f1 of x, which is basically summing uh, over y, the f of x, y. 
and our f of x, y is 1 over 54 x plus y. And this gives us 1 over 54 x plus y. A, y is 1, y is 2, y is 3, and therefore we have the last one, y is 4. And when we combine all that, we'll get that f of 1x is equals to 1 over 54, 4x plus 10. And that will give us 2x, it will give us 2x plus 5 all over 27. And therefore, we can now get our f of y given x which is f of x, y, which is 1 over 54 x plus y, and that we are going to divide with 1 over 27, 2 x plus 5. And definitely uh, that will give rise to a good expression because this is 1 over 54, divide 1 over 27, which is 1 over 2, so it will be x plus y and then here we have 2 2 x plus 5 and that is the conditional distribution of uh, y given x and with that set of information we can go ahead and find other variables for example probability of y is equals to 2 given x is equals to 1. It basically means you come here and uh, substitute the value of x as 1 and the value of y as 2. Then x is 1, 2 times 1, and then plus 5, which is 3 over 7 times 2 is 14. So the probability of y given y is equals to 2 given x is equals to 1 is 2 over this 3 over 14. So that is for a discrete case. We want to go ahead and now look at another example whereby y is a continuous case where we let y and x have a joint probability density function which is given by f of x, y is equals to 1 over 8 x, y x lies between 0 and 2 and y lies between 1 and 3 and then 0 elsewhere. So we want to go ahead and do the same. Remember we can get the joint of x and y or y and x. Like here we have the joint of x and y. Now we want to get the conditional of x given y and that will be f of x, y over f of 2 of y and so we want to go ahead and get the f of 2i that is the marginal distribution of y when you have a joint case it's 1 over 8 so we are going to integrate over x x y dy which is uh, y over 8 uh, sorry it's uh, we are going to integrate x y with respect to x and this will give us y over 8, uh, x squared over 2, x between 0 and 2. This is 4 over 2, which is 2, times this, that will be 1 over 4y, or y over 4. And we know that uh, y will lie between 1 and 3. So the f2 of y will be given by that uh, case that you have there. And with that set of information then we can go ahead and uh, be able to, to perform other activities. We can now find the f of x given y which is the joint distribution of both of them which is 1 over 8 x y then divide by y over 4 and this is the same as 1 over 8 x y times 4 over y by y 1 
and 2 and this will give me x over 2. So the f of x, y is very clear. The f of x given y, we can comfortably see it's x over 2 and x lies between 0 and 2 and 0 elsewhere. And with that, we can use it to solve other examples. For example, z of x given y is equals to y will be equals to the integral of x f of x given y dx and that will be equals to 0 to 2 x times x over 2 dx which is x squared over 2 which is a half x cubed over 3 0 to 2 which is a half times 8 over 3 and that one will give us 4 over 3. We have a random variable x with a pdf f of x is equals to lambda e less power minus lambda x and I want to use that to find the moment generating function. m x of t is equals to the expected of e is to power t x and this can be expressed as from 0 to infinity e less to power t x f of x dx and we know the f of x is given by lambda e less to power minus lambda x dx and so based on that equation we can write it out and this gives us lambda 0 to infinity e less to power negative x lambda minus t dx which we could also have written it as 0 to infinity e less to power x t minus lambda dx so we take the power we differentiate it and then we divide with it so it will be lambda divided by t minus lambda then we have e x t minus lambda from 0 to infinity Remember, if we try to get the e raised to power infinity, we'll have a challenge. So we are going to rewrite the function inside here, and we're going to rewrite it in terms of, we're going to rewrite it that way. Why are we doing this? So that when we substitute infinity, this will converge to zero, and that will help us to be able to get the value of that. Therefore, we can write this as lambda, t minus lambda e less to power negative infinity minus e less to power zero uh, in the equation and that will give us if we had differentiated it in this form now we have substituted then it would mean that we have a negative sign here and another negative sign there therefore i could comfortably write it as t uh, lambda t minus lambda as the final solution without the negative sign. So what happened to the negative sign is because of uh, alternating these two, when I differentiate the power, that will change. But also, then this would have changed also. This would affect the solution here. This will not remain as t minus lambda, but it will be left as lambda minus t. So you have that option of writing it as lambda over lambda minus t or it would have been negative lambda t minus lambda. Any of that would have given us the moment generating function for the PDF that you have been given there. With the knowledge of the moment generating function we can get the expected value of x. 
So we want to find the expected value of x. We, the, the most common method we'd have used would have been to introduce x, then we introduce the, the function that we have, which is equals to minus lambda minus 2 x dx. I do not want to go through that method. You can go through it, but the solutions will be the same. What I would want to do is I would want to get the first derivative of the moment generating function uh, lambda minus t squared. So here what we have done is we've getting the m over dt. Then we know that expected of x is the m x prime at t is equals to zero and that will give us lambda all over lambda squared which is one over lambda. So this is the same solution we would have obtained if we solve this equation uh, using integration by parts keeping in mind that we are integrating with respect to x so our lambda would have been a constant in that integration but would have given us the same solution. Now for us to be able to get the variance would require the expected of x squared. When we have been given the moment, this moment second derivative at t is equals to zero will give us the expected of x squared. So therefore we want to get the second derivative of the moment because we have the first one which is negative two lambda divided by lambda minus t raised to power three. So we have mx at zero, which is two lambda all over lambda cubed, which is two over lambda squared. So that's how you get the expected value. And this is the expected value of x squared. And the variance of x is the expected of x squared minus expected of x, everything squared, which is two over lambda squared minus one over lambda squared. And that gives us one over lambda squared as the solution for that uh, equation that you have. So if you are given the moment generating function, the first derivative gives us the expected of x. So what are the steps you would need to follow? One, you find the mx of t. Two, the expected of x is the mx first derivative at t is equals to zero. And then three, the variance or the expected squared will be the second derivative at t is equals to zero. And then the fourth step is for you to get the variance of x, which is basically uh, the second derivative uh, minus the first derivative at zero, and then you square the solution. Are given x and y that have a joint probability mass function which is 1 over 15 x plus y x is equals to 0 1 2 3 and y is 1 2 and 0 elsewhere we want to calculate the covariance and the correlation between x and y so then get the expected of x y which is the, uh, we sum over y we sum over x x y 1 over 15 x plus y and this component here is similar to 1 over 15 x squared y plus x y squared and therefore the values of x and y have been given y is equals to 1 and 2 and x is 0 1 and 2 therefore expected of x y if I'm supposed to sum over x, will be given by 1 over 15. When x is 0, everything will be 0. When x is 1, it will be y plus y squared. 
and when x is 2, it will be 4y plus 2y squared. So that's what we have for the first part. And uh, putting them together, we can see a number of things are common here. I have y and 4y, that is 5y plus 3y squared. So this gives us 1 over 15, we sum over y, 5y plus 3y squared, and that takes us to 1 over 15. y is 1, it will be 5 plus 3, and when y is 2, it will be 10 plus 12. And so this is 22 plus 8, which is 30. So it will be 30 over 15, which is equals to 2. So expected of x, y will be given by 30 over 15, which is 2. For us to be able to continue, we need to get the expected of x. And for us for to get expected of x, we need the f1 of x, that is the marginal uh, probability mass function. Of x. So we find the f1 of x which is summing over y, 1 over 15, x plus y, which is 1 over 15. The values of y are 1 and 2, so it will be x plus 1 plus x plus 2. So those are the values of uh, y that we have. And so you see when we sum over y, we only left with x, and that gives me 1 over 15, 2x plus 3. And that's the f1 of x. So f1 of x is 1 over 15, 2x plus 3. Time divided by 15. So then we can get the expected of x. And by definition is the sum over x, 1 over 15 times x, 2x plus 3. And this component is 2x squared plus 3x over 15. So now we want to sum that over, uh, over x. x lies between 0 and 2. So 1 over 15. So when x is 0, it will be 0 plus 0. When x is 1, it is 2 plus 3. And when x is 2, it will be 4, it will be 8 plus 6. And this is 14 plus 5, which is 19 over 15. And that is the expected of x. So we have our expected of x. We have expected of x, y. Now we want to find expected of y. And for us to get the expected of y, we need the f2 of y, that is the marginal probability mass function of y. And how do we get the f2 of y? We are going to sum over x, and therefore we have f2 of y is we sum over x, 1 over 15, x plus y. Remember the values of x is 0, 1, and 2, so it will be 1 over 15. When x is 0, it will be 0 plus y. When x is 1, it will be 1 plus y. And when x is 2, it will be 2 plus y. And that is what we have. So that is 3y and 3. So we have 3 plus 3y all over 15, which is 1 plus y divided by 5 for the f2 of y. So expected of y is the sum over y, y times 1 plus y over 5, which is 1 over 5, sum over y, which is 1, 2, and this is y plus y squared. That's what we have in that part. And therefore, this is 1 over 5. When y is 1, it will be 1 plus 1, and when y is 2, it's 2 plus 4, which is uh, 6, which is 8 over 5. And therefore, we have all the values expected of x, y to be 2. 
we have expected of y to be 8 over 5 and we have the expected of x to be equals to 19 over 15. So since we have all the three values, then it's very easy for us to get the covariance of x, y according to the definition, which will be 2 minus 8 over 5 times 19 over 15. And the LCM is 75, which is 150, then minus 152, that is 19 times 8. And then we have negative 2 over 75, and these tell us that there is a, a negative covariance between x and y. So they covary negatively, an increase in one is leading to a decrease in the other. The second part is to get the correlation. And by definition, we are told that uh, the correlation of x, y is the covariance of x, y divided by the standard deviation of x and the standard deviation of y. First thing is you need to get the variance and from there we are able to get the standard deviation. And the variance of x is given by x squared minus x everything squared. And we have we have f1 of x, so it's very easy for us to be able to get the expected of x squared. And therefore, we can get the expected of x squared, which is we sum over x, x squared times the f1 of x, and f1 of x was 2x plus 3 divided by 15. And this is 2x cubed plus 3x squared over 15. And x is 0, 1, and 2. So if I put 15 outside, when x is 0, it will be 0 plus 0. When x is 1, it will be 2 plus 3. And when x is 2, it will be 8, 16, plus 12. And all that gives me... 28 plus 5, 33 over 15, and also we can write it as 11 over 5. So we've gotten the expected of x squared, so now we can easily get the variance. So the variance of x will be equal to the expected of x squared, which is 11, minus the expected of x. What was our expected of x? It was 19 square. Here the LCM is 225, and therefore this is 495, and then minus 361, and that will give us 134 over 225. To have the variance, we can get the standard deviation, which is the square root of the variance of x, and this will give me the square root of 134 all over 15. So that is the variance of x and now we can also go ahead and get the variance of y. So for us to be able to get the uh, standard deviation of y, we need first of all to get the expected of y squared so that we can get the variance of y and then based on the variance we can get the standard deviation. And the expected of y squared is we sum over y, y squared times the f 2 of y. And what was our f2 of y? Our f2 of y was 1 plus y divided by 5. Some the values of y, y is 1 and 2. It will give us 1 over 5. When it is 1, it is 1 plus 1. And when it is 2, it is 4 plus 8, which is 12 plus 2, which is equals to 14 over 5. Now we got the expected of y squared. We can go ahead and get the variance of y. The variance of y is 14 over 5 
minus 8 over 5 squared. And the LCM is 25, which is 70 minus 64, which is 6 over 25. Therefore, the standard deviation of y is the square root of this over 5. The square root of the variance gives you the standard deviation. And therefore, we can conclude by saying that the correlation between x and y is negative 2 over 75 divided by the square root of 6 over 5 times square root of 134 over 5. 515, which gives us negative 2 all over the square root of 804, and the value is negative 0 0.0125. So what does that tell us? There is a there is a negative. We have we have a negative correlation between x and why. So that's basically what we are finding. So I'm hoping you've enjoyed the video. Please do subscribe.